former. Um, so uh, welcome to the new year. Uh, thank you everybody for taking the time to actually listen to me. Um, I'll be talking about solar using Sunspot on Rails. And a little bit about me, my name is Harold Dost. You can find me on Twitter. I occasionally blog on my company's website and my company itself, uh, based out of the DC area, founded back in 2009. Our primary focus is in Oracle work. Uh, I myself work in their integrations layer, the Oracle Fusion Middleware as it's called, uh, but I've branched out in the last year and I'm working on some minor contracts in Ruby. So, Myself though, I'm uh, living in the cold north. It was, you know, foot of snow on Sunday night, so flight got canceled. And then there was the ice the next day. So uh, after a, you know, long cab ride on the icy roads and, you know, three rebookings and finally, you know, going on, I finally made it to Atlanta safely. So glad to be in the warmth that is the 32 degrees here. <laughs> um, but enough about me. Let's talk a little bit about solar. So solar in and of itself uh, is based on the Lucene library. Uh, Lucene is written in Java and as is solar. And it has a lot of major features. So multiple index searching, faceting, joins, sorting by fields, um, and even it has pluggable rankings. Uh, so you can have, there's a, there's a couple of different models. I'm sure you could roll your own if you really wanted to, but the, there's a few options available. Um, there's also a Ruby version of Lucene called Ferret. Um, it used to be compatible, but a lot of the, you know, the file system and all that has, has changed, uh, the file format rather, has changed. And so now it's more of a, you know, it's like a cousin more than a brother. Uh, but continuing on, uh, one of the things that the Apache group has as part of the project is a running set of benchmarks. And these actually run every single day so that they can, you know, avoid the boiling, uh, boiling frog problem. Uh, if you ever heard of it, you know, if you slowly heat up something that has a frog in it, it'll boil to death. Um, well, that's that's what the, they try to avoid. And so here, um, these two benchmarks are just on uh, the loading and indexing of them. And so you can see over time, it's it's gone down a little bit, but you know, there's various features that may affect that rapidly, such as the one that's uh, got the deep spike down there. Um, it's 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 something that's it's interesting. So if you want to actually contribute back, they do have these available so that you can kind of see where the where the community is going as far as efficiency. Um, also here, this is a simple term query. So if you're just typing in something, this is about how many queries per second you could get. This is just running on a single uh, multiple core machine. Um, and then here, uh, this is a term plus a date facet. And so that's a, facets, all they do is you look at a specific set of queries and you can look at how the fields are organized and get basically a count of the different items within them. So Solar itself, like I said, uh, it's based on Lucene, written in Java, and it provides, um, one of the biggest things is that it provides, you know, a very well-defined Java, or not Java, <laughs> XML, JSON, and CSV interface along with binary HTTP. Um, one of the more interesting features uh, that I think it has is the geospatial and uh, rich document indexing. So for the geospatial, it's pretty much as it sounds if you're searching for something that's location-based so that you can, you know, let's say you have store locations and you want to roll your own Google Maps, you can do that within this. Um, I wouldn't say the entire Google Maps, but at least um, for where the locations are. Um, and then rich document indexing, you can look at PDFs if you're storing all of them. Uh, that's available, although not directly in Solar itself, or not dir directly available in Sunspot, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. So for as far as the gem, Sunspot's the one that I use. There are a couple others, uh, but this seems to be the more popular one. Provides a very simple interface, um, and you put it right into the model. So, as you can see up here, you have 
um, the different types of fields. So the field names are just as they would be um, symbols uh, as you'd mention them any other place. Um, and then the type there, such as text, if you mention it as text, it's something that you can do in a full text search, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, integers and uh, strings, you're able to do a search with uh, specifics. So it's more like a SQL query. You can limit on a specific, this has to be equal to, let's say 2008 in this case. Um, so for faceting, you have, this is, this is one example of a super simple search. Um, you have a set of athletes and you want to do a search. You say full text, I'm looking for athletes from the United States. So you do that full text search. Um, and then you also want to see, you know, of those people, who, how many were from each year. So you can see the facet and when you pull out the results, which I'll show you in a bit, um, you can see, you know, how many were from each. And a common example of this is actually in uh, Newegg. If any of you have ever configured, built your own computer, or just bought random parts, this is one of the places you can obviously buy them. But the example is you know, right here where it has you know, 163 things between $100 and $200. That's an example of how you can get your faceting. And from there, you can select that specific range and then build um, another query, which will allow you to further limit your results. So one thing that I noticed later on um, when I was working with this, because I first, the reason I first even started using Sunspot and Solar um, is I'm working with, on my, one of my side contracts, we're working with uh, different restaurants and trying to help them get a better idea on their monetization of like, let's say you run a sale. And I want to run that sale and know how that affects my actual um, sales. So $5 off drinks on Tuesdays, does that raise my, you know, raise my revenue only for that Tuesday? Or am I seeing a lot more customers coming back because of that deal? Um, so as I was talking about before, it only works, um, faceting only works for certain types. So if you look before, uh, the athlete name was actually considered text, and that's something that's searchable, um, but it's not something that they'll allow you to do facets on. Um, now, that's not to say that in <coughs> solar itself, you won't be able to do certain things, but there's what's called a, a multi-value item, and those cannot be faceted on, and the way that it builds you know, the back end, it doesn't allow you to do that. So if you actually want to have something that's both searchable in full text, but as well as facetable. You can actually mention them twice. Um, there may be a better way of doing that, uh, but I, as I said, I'm not an expert in this. It's only been uh, about a month that I've been using it, but it's it's something that's that I think is, or actually about two months. Um, it's it's something that's worth mentioning. So as far as rich text documents. Um, one of the ways that I, I found but have not tried uh, is there's something called Sunspot Cell, and there's a number of competing branches um, just sitting out there, and you supposedly can use them, um, it, but it takes a bit of setup. So what I have below, this entire slide will be available online, so if you want to use it, um, go right ahead, it'll be posted on Twitter, and I'm sure uh, through the through ATL rug, you'll be able to find it that way as well. So I'm actually going to go into a quick demo. So as to show you a little bit of the stuff. That does not scale well. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so this is just something really simple that I built. Um, uh, I apologize for the tabbing. All right. And I imagine I can do something. 
OK, so to get started and actually add Sunspot into your, into your project, it's just really simple. Sunspot Rails, the typical bundle install. Um, but if you're using something like Heroku, which I imagine a lot of you are, um, there's the actual solar server that needs to run somewhere. So for your development purposes, they also have this gem, which installs the server into the gems directory, and then it'll allow you to install, um, basically run the configuration, and you'll have basically the server running on your system so that when you deploy to Heroku, you'll have you know, their hosted solution or whatever you decide to go with. Um, so once you've got that in there, I realize that. Oh, I'm mirroring apparently. Okay, so as I was talking about before though, uh, right here in your model, I have the athlete name as both a string and as text, because if I want to facet on that, then I'll, you know, I'll be able to facet on the name, um, I'll be able to facet on, you know, the year, but I won't be able to facet on the country right now. Uh, however, I will be able to search for it. So, just as an example, just real quick one. Under the search, I have athletes search and then Germany right now. But let's say we want the United States. But we also want to know more specifically, you know, who are we looking for in the United States? And then being that it is more of a typical search engine, you can just type in certain portions. So I want Michael Phelps, but I don't feel like typing out the entire thing. So you can see we have Michael Phelps, Michael Ante, Michael Red, Tinsley, and Johnson. Um, and we also have different years. So let's say right now this application, we're not be, we don't have the ability to filter on years, but we want to. So what we can do is if we go into the terminal, this, and I'm just going to bring up the console. I have a couple of samples in here. So here are a few uh, that I came up with before, and let's say that you want to um, do the simple search that's that's available in the browser, but you want specifically athletes that won in 2012 and they're from the United States. So we can go in and run that. And now you can see to access the actual uh, to access the actual results, that is the objects that are related to this search, you just type in, in this case I have search US facet. Oh, is it a little oh wow, sorry about that. <laughs> Forgot to check that one. Okay. So, a little more re nope, still not readable. We're getting there. There we go. All right. So, search US facet 2012. Okay. And as you can see right here, they actually have this is the object itself, um, and it has a number of characteristics available to it, such as you know how many total results are there from the search. Um, how many rows were um, originally retrieved for this particular part of the search. So one thing that to note is that Solar actually has built-in uh, pagination. So for requesting certain results, you don't have to you know, do anything fancy. It's just paginate, tell it what page you're on, and how many results per page you want. Um, so that's, that's something that's, that I think is very, very helpful. Um, so for example, here, um, right now we just want to get the results and we'll get the first one. And now you can see that, once again, Michael Phelps appears. Um, but let's go for the last. And it's Heather Petrie. So right now we can see the entire object, um, but there's also additional, um, one other way that you can access the results, um, and it's what's called hits. And so these are all um, these are all the IDs for the objects. So that if you want to do a um, manipulate it in a different way, or you want access to just the hits, 
for whatever reason you have that ability. Um, but also if you want to, let's say, get the next one. So we're going to do our search again. And we'll do United States 2012 and order by. And actually, order by, one, one point to make. Um, right now I have it as order by gold medals um, in the descending order. Um, but if you want it to first give it uh, the score, and then if there's a tie, sort by something. They have uh, the symbol which is called score. And score is where the way that it would sort it normally. That's just based on how it deems relevance. And then you can sort it by something else. So let's say that, you know, Michael Phelps and some other swimmer, they're both being searched for. And the only difference between the two, they're both relevant because it's United States and whatever. But you say, all right, they both have the same relevancy score. How else do I want to sort them? Because it might not be, you know, you won't see an 87654321. You'll see, you know, I don't know, 56854321. Um, because of how, because of how the score works first and then the, then the gold medal. Um, but back to the original point. I apologize for drifting. Uh, so if you want to do pagination, or customize your pagination, pagination, and then page. Let's say we want page two, and then if you just worry about what page you're on, it'll default to the 30. If you want specific uh, number of results, then you can specify that as well. And so in this case, I failed. <laughs> That's why we have samples to run with. And unfortunately, it looks like this one, I didn't do that. Um, however, in my code for my controller, I did. So if you look here, it's paginate, page, and then the parameters. And then for this case, you know, in case I don't actually want to pass the page parameter, I default it to one because that's what you'd be expecting. So now, if we go back to the page, you can see we want Michael, United States. Page two probably won't exist, and it doesn't. Um, one, because my server's off. <laughs> uh, there we go. Let's boot that baby back up. Well, so this time, it'll probably it'll come back with a, yeah. So it comes back with an empty list, which is expected because there's only one page. But if we limit it back down to just the United States, we can get a page two. Um, heck, we could probably get a page 30. So, and it looks like in this case, for the most part, um, it has sort of somewhat by an order of metals. Because if you notice, a lot of them, high numbers are here and all the ones are way down below. But that could just be the way that I inserted all the records. I haven't yet tested that. Um, so far, are there any questions? No? Okay. Back in there. Um, so yeah, uh, like I said, my name is Harold Dost. Uh, I'm a consultant with RazTech, and if you guys have any questions, now would be the time for them. Uh, so, how, like, how do you uh, do? You have any like thoughts on testing the searchable code? Like, how do you spin up like a like a solar server for testing, or do you is there like some other way? You can... That's actually something I'm I'm exploring into is how to make sure, but. Um, from some of the documentation I've been reading, there's um, cucumber tests that you can run with it. I haven't gone into the specifics, but um, th the testing resources are actually available on the Sunspot Gem. So that, that would be the first place I would look. Um, as I said, still an intro, but it's, it's one place that I did see um, promising results. We actually did that on one project, and what we ended up doing is we actually spin up a version a small mini instance of it, and that's just a small subset of data, and we run it through. Okay. So, no, and just a question on that. So, did you did you use actually the the Sunspot Solar, or did you have a separate instance for your testing? No, no, we're using the standard Sunspot Solar, but it's like well, 
Well, no, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Separate instance. It's been a while since I set this up, but from what I remember, it was a separate instance. Okay. So. It's, it's, I think a gem you put in, and then you just put some spun spot. Sunspot true yeah, yeah. on your test. Yeah. Right, 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 yeah, yeah. And it works. Yeah. To spin up the server, it's literally just change your Rails environment. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I guess part Except of the question is, is, uh, like, is it worth testing than that? Because it's kind of testing Sunspot itself at some point, right? I, it's like how do you test a machine learning algorithm? Right? I guess yeah. like data integration. So you, it's not just, you just want to make sure you get results more or less. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. the results which you can take. If you're going to do this massive search, now you're going to have to set it off to solar versus the other. So is it referring to the same search results? Um, okay, that's true. Yeah, that would be a lot of them. But you're right. Mock, basically, basically, right? right? Yeah. Man, you're just saying mock the sunspot server. No, no. You, I'm saying don't mock it. Oh. At the same time, too, you, you know, do you want to test that you actually got your searches right, though, too? Then you might actually go for the stack. But if you know that your searches are correct, and if you test against that, then obviously for a faster unit test, then you would say, all right, don't keep testing in this layer mock that I'll reduce so did you just uh, did you only test on the number of results returned, or did you actually uh, search on uh, you know the actual results themselves? Did you do a look through, make sure that you know, like sort it, come back and say, oh, do these do these even exist? Usually, the way we were testing it, at least, usually it was part of a bigger piece of functionality okay. that was in there. So what I would call it is kind of a functional test. Huh. Yeah, they, were, they, they weren't really units, but they weren't really view tests because we weren't hitting the view level with it. Right. But we're testing through the, you know, the controller stack and down through, basically. Um, when, we, when we're testing like cucumbers, if we have, say, we've got a field where um, it should make it not, like this field should be not sunspot searchable. Right. So these things should not, then we'll set up the database. Oh, okay. So you're saying. There's, there's four yeah. objects. I, I yeah. go to the, the web page. I should see two objects because two of them are not searchable. Right. Yeah. So, like, like in, in this, where you have like technically integer is not is not searchable in the full text, but it is searchable in that you can have a with clause on it. Yeah. Well, it's also kind. like we might have things that we're indexing, mm -hmm. but we want to hide them from certain searches. Okay. And so we just like and so we'll make sure that, and we don't want it to display in the search results either. So there's like 500 things that should match the search, but 300 of them are. Okay. Privileged or whatever, and then you know, just, we just make sure that no, we've got our index right. correctly. So you're really you're not getting somebody else's emails. <laughs> right. Wait, what you're doing is you're testing your you're testing your indexing. You're right. testing like did I set up indexing correctly? You're not really yes. testing Sunspot. You know it yep. works, but you're testing you. Did you, okay. did you set this up correctly? Yep. Does anybody have questions for that? <laughs> <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> hey, why not, right? It's, it's all about learning. No, no, yeah, so that's kind of like, that's what I'm asking about. So, because I, I don't really know, um, I mean, it seems to me like the reason why you do something like this, why you use solar or index your database, is because you want faster results, right? Like, so, there's, like, at what point am I going to be thinking about using this? And what's the point is, like, my SQL going to fail? Or, I mean, like, well, what, what am I going to so the real use case for this is anything that you want to do without having to roll your own Google or have somebody else have access to your information. So if you want to roll your own servers so that you can still do something that's full text searchable while at the same time being yours. Because um, there are ways that you can, like, you can have, you can pay Google to give you one of their little boxes and it'll index all of your intranet if you really want it to. And it'll, you know, provide all sorts of searching within your internal network or within your websites to Google. Um, but if you don't want them still having access to your information, this is something that, you know, you it's open source. You know, you, you don't have to pay for it. You might want to pay for support through somebody. But, um, you know, you can rev up the server, index all of your documents, and go from there. I mean, obviously, if you're doing it with other products, then you'll have to do integration there, but it's it's really something so that you own it, more or less. So like using solar for full text, searching different <coughs> piles of like minus 12. Like, yeah, because like, then you have to say like, like and this or, or yeah, this. And if they're yeah. smart, usually they often provide suggestions and things that are similar, completions. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yes, I mean, it's, for, it's, for low, it's for literally searching for data, not, it's not for like creating data that you know what it is. It's mm -hmm. for you to typically pass through user input to get back. Oh, I want to find, you know, Impala's like on a 
our site and then it goes through and finds you know, all the things that have been called in the name. It's not looking on the, the car type field for literally like, right. I want to find all my records in the cars table where cars and call is bad. So, you know, kind of a bigger than that. The full text yeah. search and aggregate. So like so it's like so I you know so it's supposed to also like put it like so like Mongo or something like that also has full text, but it's not gonna be as cool, it's not gonna be as big or something like that. Like, like, and like what you're saying then is yeah. it's not really what that's for. This is like more for that. It's, yeah. And, and and the use case that we actually had it for is is not even for the front facing customer of the product that we're working on. It's actually for us as developers because we're I mean, we're looking through and we're trying to parse out these. It's formatted by machines but for humans. So it's not like it's not a JSON. It's it's like printed out documents and we're trying to ingest that. And so if we're looking for certain things that maybe were faulty, so we can say we can do a flag and do a with, which is basically equating saying this does not have a parsed form of it. We can say anything that doesn't have a parsed form what are some like search for specific things and see if they're in all of these different receipts and then go through and parse them there. So it's it's something that's helping us build it further, but we actually want to beyond that um, make it facing the user later. But <clears throat> right now it's it's mainly for development purposes. Can you speak to the application of using this as part of a data mining aspect? You get an app that's turning off data. Well, Is and that's 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 more or less what we have. Um, we have a bunch of nodes that are gathering data from a bunch of different sources, and we're going through and parsing it. But as part of that, we we need to be able to have it search. Now, you could have um, you could prioritize things like say look for certain aspects of a you know of a incoming data item and use that search to you know. Maybe it's more relevant than other ones. And so you have a whole bunch of jumbled data coming in, but it's not necessarily relevant. So you could have searches within your query and then have it run through a certain pipeline, a different pipeline for each one. So. Anything else? Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your time. I hope I haven't wasted it. <laughs>